You know, I want to share with you something about responsibility, the word responsibility. The Lord put in my heart something so precious that I want to share with you, which really, uh, I've never heard a message like this in a sense. Does it mean that no one has preached it? But I think uh, you're going to hear it for the first time in a sense of responsibility. All of us have responsibility, right? We're people of faith, we're people of the word, and we're people of the spirit. Can you say amen? amen. Word people, say with me, we're word people. Faith people. Faith. Spirit people. And so with that, you know, it carries a responsibility, doesn't it? It really does. It does. Amen. Each one of us, now notice this, each one of you uh, should recognize the responsibility that you have, that God's given you to do your best with what you receive and to do your best with your life, your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Each one is given a responsibility. And I think, I, now notice this, this is all Bible. We're going to see some things, some powerful things. Uh, you have a responsibility for your own conduct, right? Now notice this, when you were a child, mom and daddy had a responsibility over you, right? Or get that switch on you, huh? <laughs> amen. I remember one day, uh, I was, at, you know, we would come from the city. I'm a city boy. We'd go visit my grandmother on a ranch, my grandfather. And they had a lot of chickens, they had horses and chickens, and so I'd spent the whole summer out there. And one day, I cornered a chicken. I don't know why I did that, but I cornered a chicken, and I started throwing dirt on that chicken. And all of a sudden, dirt started getting on that chicken all the way to the neck, and I'm like, man, I'm just loving it. Right? All of a sudden, I feel such a pain on my hind. I feel such a pain that stung, and man, I just ran. Well, it was my grandma. She got a, she got a, a just a, a branch and just a, just put it on me good, right? And she said, don't you ever do that again, right? I learned a lesson, right? She had a responsibility over me, right? I learned quick responsibility not to hurt chickens, right? <laughs> we have chickens next door, right? So there's a lot of chickens here, right? So we have uh, responsibilities for our own actions, our, uh, our consequences, we're accountable for the choices that we make. Folks, listen, you're accountable with the choices that you make as a believer. As a believer of God, a person of faith, as one that knows the word. All of us in this house know the word. All of us have been given the word and we're increasing. I love that we come hungry for more of God. Not because we miss the word, because we want more of the word. Missing the word is because you haven't been in there. But wanting more of the word means, man, I got a hold of the word and I just want more and more and more. You know what I'm talking about? It, it, when you first got saved and you started going to church, boy, that word was just so wholesome, full of power, and you wanted more and you wanted to be there. You couldn't wait. You dream on your pastor's what he would be saying, and you just couldn't wait. And there was just a love walk that you had. Oh, you wanted to learn more and more and more and more. And you just, every time the door opened, you were there, right? Hallelujah. Amen. And so it, it's amazing, right? Look at Galatians, the sixth chapter, verses five. Hallelujah. With that, that I just shared with you carries a big responsibility. Now, notice what it says in Galatians, the sixth chapter. We're going to look at some scripture here, but, uh, and if we don't finish it, we're just going to continue it as the Lord uh, led us through the anointing, uh, the anointing's purpose. That was almost a uh, 10 series. And it was so good, and I thought today was going to be another one. But I believe we're just building upon every, every word that God gives us, right? The Bible says in Galatians, the sixth chapter, verses four, each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone. This is the NIV, excuse me. Without comparing themselves to someone else, for each one should carry their own load. The King James says each one should carry their own burden. Uh, it, it doesn't mean for you to have the pressures of life because we know how to give the burdens of life unto the Lord. But it's talking about responsibility. In this word, it talks about your own load. Load, which is considered in the, old, in the, new, in the word of God in, in the Old Testament also as burden. You know, you put a weight on a donkey. That's a burden. You put a load on a camel, that's a burden. But we know that Jesus came and we transfer our burdens unto him. But here he's talking about responsibility. Notice what it says in the Message Bible. Each one of you take responsibility for doing 
the creative best you can with your own life. Amen. Hallelujah. Now notice this. We find the choices that you and I make have responsibilities. But as a believer, as a word person, a person full of God, full of the word of God, full of the Holy Ghost, there's been given you more responsibility, not only for your own life, not only for your well-being, but also the responsibility will fall on you as a believer to do more into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. In other words, you're full of much of the word. You can't stay silent. Sunday, you get the word. Monday, you can't be quiet. Wednesday, you get the word. And Thursday, you can't be quiet. Uh, you know, sometimes we become under, uh, we become detectives un, uh, under, under, unknown <laughs> to people, right? Undercover Christians. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But notice this. We've been giving much as I said earlier, so much that God has given us is going to be required the more as believers. You know, you have somebody that is at your office, as I said, Sunday, sneezing and saying, oh, these, uh, my sinuses are going to kill me. Well, you're not going to agree with that because you know the word. But you will, you will say, well, let me ask you a question. Do you believe Jesus Christ can heal you right now, that sinus. And that person will, well, 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 I guess, yeah, I believe Jesus. Amen. What are you doing? Responsibility as a believer being, coming into an effect, being in available. I, I tell you, you cannot sit still when you hear something like that where you find a responsibility rise within you. John Osteen was in an elevator with businessmen, and they were cussing, 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 cussing. And he just, uh, he let them cuss a while, and, and he was just there. And then finally, he went to the elevator and stopped the elevator. You know those stopping buttons, emergency stops? He stopped and said, gentlemen, uh, I've given you time, now give me time. <laughs> and he started praising God, worshiping God, because they were cussing. So he was praising God, worshiping God, honoring God. And then he says, thank you, sir, for giving me this time to honor the Lord. Hits the elevator. I tell you, that's being bold. Say with me, that's being bold. Hallelujah. Amen. But see, he knew the responsibility. Look, notice, folks, he knew that was his responsibility to overcome the darkness at that moment, the wickedness, the, the things that the enemy does. How many times have you stood around people that are cussing and we've never said anything? We just kind of walk away like, oh, you know, and you feel bad that they cuss and you, and you did nothing about it, right? But see, see, I think responsibility starts rising within us. Look at Mark, the fourth chapter. Hallelujah. Mark, the fourth chapter. Praise God. Hallelujah. As I was preparing this, my heart was just stirring. And I saw the purpose of this. We're people of faith. We're people of the word. We're people full of the spirit. Uh, we're, we're overflowing with the Word of God. Say with me, amen. Are you overflowing with the Word of God? Yeah. Uh, you know, when you, we come to church, we come to church to, to worship God and to prepare for more and, and get, get victories. Uh, in other words, get advancements, to move into victory ground and, and to recognize we're getting ammunition. We're getting our, we're, <laughs> we're getting our armor shined, let's put it that way. We're getting our swords sharpened for the battle. Hallelujah, amen. We're, we're putting on that armor Oh, Jesus, that armor that has been beaten during the week, but we're getting it on. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, we come dusting ourselves off with the dust of the world. <laughs> Amen. And we're not bringing the luggage, and we're not carrying the luggage. We don't carry any more luggage of the past. Amen. No one in this room has luggage of the past, right? We got rid of it. We gave it to Jesus. Amen. And we're not picking any other luggage up. We know it. It's too heavy for us. Amen. Mark the fourth chapter. And uh, notice what it says in Mark, the fourth chapter, verses 24. And notice what it says. Verses 24. Jesus speaking, so it's very powerful. Mark 4, 24, he said to them, Take heed what you hear. The measure you give will be measured for you. And to you who hear will more be given. 
For to him who has will more be given, and from him who has not will be taken even what he has. Now notice this, faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. Our faith increases with the word of God. You're hearing today, you're increasing. But you're increasing with the responsibility because what you're hearing more is going to be coming to you. Now notice this, uh, has anybody ever uh, watched a television or movie in, in our, on your iPhone and, and your wife or your husband tells you, what did he say? Well, I don't know, I didn't pay attention. Well, why was the TV on and why was the volume on and you didn't pay attention? Because see, your attention was on something else. This is what God is telling us. Keep your attention on what I'm saying. Hear what I'm saying and more of what I'm telling you will be given to you. That's prosperity. That's success. That's responsibility, ladies and gentlemen. But see, the thing about this is uh, the enemy knows how to keep the word from reaching us. And as I, said, as I said Wednesday and Sunday, the word comes to us and there's breakthrough every time. Every time the word is given to you, there's a freedom and breakthrough. The, the, the power in the word is available to you every time. There's enough power in this room to change Oklahoma City and the state and the world. There's enough power. When we pray, when we come together and pray, we're pushing back the activities of the enemy. And it's amazing. We'll see the, 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 the forecast or we'll see the, uh, the event of that prayer in the news and we'll say amen and amen. I don't know if you know, but when, uh, when Iran attacked Israel, 99% uh, of their missiles were, were taken out, right? But they failed to report, and some in, in Israel said missiles wobbled in the sky and fell out of the sky with no power. This is prayer. This is prayer. We've been praying that. Father, we pray missiles will be wobbled into the sea with no power and be returned to the enemy's camp. Well, a lot of missiles fell out of the sky. And notice this. This tells me. You have authority when you pray in the name of Jesus. Why? Because you're hearing what he's saying. You're hearing what he's saying. And folks, if we can live a life of hearing what he's saying in our works, in our ability, in our, in our, our living, that's the responsibility God gives us. And I'm going to say something that's going to shock you. You are where you are today for what you said yesterday. Now take it both ways. If I'm prosperous, I said something wonderful. If I'm lacking, I said something wrong. This is so powerful. Now notice this. Uh, there, was a, there was a scientist that, that spoke some words in water, and they froze the words, and he spoke some positive, beautiful words, and they froze the water, and it made some icicles. And they put these icicles under, under the microscope, and they found the most beautiful Beautiful formations, like a, like a snowflake, if you ever see it. Beautiful formation, beautiful formation. And then he spoke negative words and awful words into the water, and they froze the water, and they were able to see under the, the microscope that these were ugly-looking, cracked icicles that were just dark particles. What you say from the Word of God brings Great responsibilities, great things. Can you say amen? So in other words, we find that Jesus said this in, in chapter 4, verse 24. He says this, take heed what you hear. Listen clo closely to the word of God. The measure you give will be measured back to you. So in other words, what I'm hearing, it's going to be measured back to me. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. And see, for to him who has will more be given, and from him who has not will be taken even what he has. In other words, folks, it's amazing that even what little you have is going to be taken away from you when we don't have the word of God. This is, this is where I, I, I recognize holes in my pants. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? You get paid Friday and Monday you're broke. I've been there. I hate it. I don't like it. Uh, it seems like everything's going wrong. Lights are being turned off, landlords coming, and, and you're working hard, and all of a sudden you have no money. What is going on? What is going on? I, I believe it's time for you to put brakes on your life and say, wait a minute, I'm going to declare the word of the Lord that the word says, for me and my household, we shall be saved. Nothing's going to touch my household. We have the increase. The blessing of the Lord makes me rich, and he has no sorrow with it. I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out, because that's what the word of God says. That's responsibility for your own life. 
You're taking responsibility. Hallelujah. Amen. And see, no one else can take your responsibility. Socialism can't do it. A government can't do it. Aid can't do it. Only God can do it. Come on, church. Can you say, can you say amen? Only God can do it. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at Matthew now. Say with me, amen, pastor. Amen. Now notice this, what you're hearing right now is going to set you free. What you're hearing now is going to set you free. And not only set you free, it's going to increase you more to hear more so that you can have more breakthroughs in your life. Hey, can you say amen? Listen to what it says in Matthew, the 13th chapter. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, Jesus, we love you. We praise you. Hallelujah. Amen. Notice what it says in verses 9. Uh, there's so much here. But notice what it says. Whoever has ears to hear, let him hear. Look at me, everybody. We have these flappers here. <laughs> Amen. It, 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 is a, it is an organ that receives what, you, what I say. But the hearing part is in our spirit. Come on, church. Your hearing part is in here. These flappers receive the amplification, but it goes into our hearts. And then... What's in your heart, now listen to what I'm going to say by the Holy Ghost. What's in your heart now comes out of your mouth. The intents, the intents of the heart of men are evil, but when they get the word of God in through their ear gates, these flappers, it goes into their spirit. Now, the word now starts working in them. It, 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 you know, people, people say, when I pray in the spirit, something happens to me. Yeah. Because your mental capacity doesn't understand it, but your spirit man understands it. Amen. Come on, church. There's something about your inner man that connects with the Spirit of God. And when you pray in the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God now connects with you. Now notice this, the mind doesn't understand it. The minds have feeling, the minds has this, the mind has worry, the mind has this. But when I connect to the Spirit of God, what is in my mind, the Holy Ghost now says, Robert, I'm going to pray for you the perfect prayer that you don't know how to pray in your situation, but the Holy Ghost does. So that's why we pray in the Spirit. Come on, church. This is what he's saying here. Come on, can you say amen? Hallelujah. Are you with me, church? Hallelujah. Amen. Now notice what it says in, in verses 9. Let's read it again. He says, whoever has ears to hear, let him hear. Come on, church. Then or, or the disciple came and said to him, why do you speak to them in parables? And Jesus said, it is given to you know the mysteries, to you know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to them it is not given. You, church, have been given the mysteries of God when you have an ear to hear. And for to him who has will be more given. You want to know more mysteries of the kingdom of God? Hear him what he's saying, and more will be given to you in abundance. Come on, church. For to him who has will more be given and he will have abundance. Now, Jesus is not a liar. He's not a man that he should repent of the Son of God that, should, that he should lie. Jesus is the truth, the way, and the life. Whatever he says you and I do, you're going to see the abundance in your walk. You're going to see something change about you. Hallelujah. Amen. A, a, a total transformation in your life. Then the responsibility that you take in your life now starts being effective. There's a responsibility that overshadows your life now. Hallelujah. Amen. And it's the word responsibility responsibility come on church you've been given responsibility but now the word has a responsibility for you can you say amen see you have responsibilities we have responsibilities now the word of god has responsibilities and to whom and for who is this responsibility to? for you the believer now there's an unbeliever is not going to understand it you tell an unbeliever, uh, God said this, and they're going to say, uh, excuse me? Uh, God told me this, excuse me? But you tell a believer, God told me this, I understand what you're saying. Come on, church, amen. Uh, you tell an unbeliever about the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed, I'm healed, body, you're healed. They'll say, excuse me? But you tell a believer that, amen, I agree with you. Responsibility of the word on you, hallelujah, amen. So he's talking to the church. He's talking to you, me. He's not talking to an unbeliever. An unbeliever will never understand this. 
But when the believer gets saved, then he's open to receive from God. Now, let's continue reading. He says, it is given, verse 11, it is given to you, know, the ministers of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For to him who has, which is a believer, will more be given. And he will have abundance. But from him who has not, unbeliever, even what he has will be taken away. Therefore, I speak to them in parables hallelujah can you say so with much increase of the word of god notice this the more that i hear the word of god the more i'm going to receive because i'm taking responsibility of that word of god come on church i'm going to say this and i want to i want you to encourage you a cold should not affect you pastor we live in we live in uh, uh, oklahoma that has a lot of a lot of pollen yeah but if you say the word the word will overcome the pollen why? Because the word has responsibilities. Come on, church, hallelujah, amen. I, I noticed that there's times in my life, for instance, like uh, I was cutting the grass and, and I started sneezing and the first thing I thought, go get me a mask. I said, no, 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 I'm not getting me a mask. I'm going to speak. I'm going to speak the word of God. So I first put my fingers in my nose. Say with me, yuck. <laughs> I went, in the name of Jesus, you be healed. You are not susceptible to this pollen in Jesus' name. And I speak to the pollen in this air, you move out of the way and I'll not be affected by pollen. I'll not sneeze. I'll not have itchy eyes and runny nose. And I started thanking God and guess what? I started sneezing more. I said, no, no, no. The word has responsibility. And guess what? I realized the yard was being cut and I was dry as can be. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Responsibility of the word working in a believer. <laughs> amen. Come on, church. I used to be scared to go to the mailbox to see all the bills. I hated our mailman. I would send our children, you go out there. And finally, they said, no, daddy, I'm not going out there. You go out there. I said, somebody got to go get the mail. Go, go out, honey. And finally, I go out there. I said, you know what? That's ridiculous. Why am I scared of this mailbox? Yeah, I get all these bills. Well, I heard the Lord say, that's your responsibility. Oh, Jesus. Okay, my responsibility. I got these bills. I walked in. I told Pastor Christine, come here, honey. Come here, children. This is, this is, this is not an animal. This is, this is daddy messing up. We got all those bills, and we laid our hands on Father, please forgive me. I'll never get in debt again in Jesus' name. So, Father, I thank you that your word says, oh, no one, nothing. I thank you, Lord Jesus. And, and I started praying over all the bills. Over all the bills, my God should supply all our needs. This bill will be taken care of. This bill will be. And, and guess what? Miracle started to happen. Not immediately, but I started noticing things. Now, notice this. I, I had windows put in my house, windows, storm windows put, thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars. And I said, Oh my God, what did I get myself into? Thousands of dollars. Lord, please forgive me. I will never get in debt again. That company went bankrupt. And they sent me a letter saying, you owe no one nothing. They're yours now. Enjoy them. Come on, church. Amen. And I said, thank you, God. All those bills that we talked about, one by one, was beaten up, was completely destroyed. No longer dead. Now, what, what did I learn? The word had responsibility in me. And the responsibility was for me to speak the word of God. Not me, the word. The word, the word. So the word had responsibility. Amen. So the more that I heard, the more that I became influenced by the word of God. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Look at your neighbor and say amen, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. See, folks, I've been there and I know what I'm talking about. I used to live looking for pipe, uh, looking for a, a, a bottle, Coke bottles in the days when they had bottles. They don't have bottles. They do have bottles, but not like they used to. They used to give you a nickel for every bottle. Pastor Christine and I, we go, we go to the ditches, look for bottles and take them. You know what we buy for bottles with the bottles? Y'all that know the story. Vienna sausages. <laughs> Vienna sausages and crackers. Come on, church. That was our meal. Oh, to this day, I can't stand Vienna sausages. Amen. Hallelujah. And, 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 and spam for everything. Amen. How many people like spam? Ooh, Jesus. I, I kind of like spam now. Amen. With mustard. But my wife doesn't like it. Amen. She doesn't like the smell. But I like spam with mustard. Hallelujah. Amen. Fried. Deep fried. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church. Making you hungry. Amen. Now, notice this. With much increase of the word of God comes much increase of faith. Faith is what we need in this day. Come on, church. Hallelujah, man. Comes knowledge. In order for you to have 
wisdom, you've got to have knowledge to understand how to deal with wisdom. A lot of people say, Pastor, can you give me a few words of your wisdom? I can't tell you what I learned, but I can sure tell you how I got to that point. So in other words, it takes knowledge of the Word of God. With much knowledge comes understanding. Uh, excuse me. With much knowledge comes uh, uh, wisdom. With much of the Word comes anointing. And that's what we talked about the other day. With much anointing comes power. And this is what we're talking about today, the power that you have. You have inside of you a residing power that is coming alive, but then sometimes squelched by the things of life. Power is rising in you, but life squelches it. Why does it squelch it? Because you're not using the responsibility of the Word to take control over those things, to bind those things, to remove those things. Come on, can you say amen? We have to realize something about this. Now notice, Pastor, why do I come to church to hear the Word of God? The question is this, so that you can hear more and become responsible in God's ways. In God's word. And I notice this. God doesn't want you sick. God doesn't want you in lack. God doesn't want you uh, without knowing the word of God. Uh, Today, uh, think about today for a moment. Let's just think about for today. Not that we're going to blame anything or anybody. But think about today. How many people are not in church today? Right now. Right now. Uh, We know people, right? I know people. (laughs) I was one that I did not want to go to church. Football was coming on, and I'd stay for football. And so football, then when they made it Monday night, there was no reason, there was no, uh, there was no, there was no, no, uh, what do you call it, Uh, excuse, thank you. There was no excuse, right? But notice this. How many people today are, are needing a breakthrough in their life? How many people you know today are needing a breakthrough in their health? in their finances. The most they can think of is today, Sunday, I deserve rest. I deserve sleeping because I work so hard. Well, what do you work for? Well, I don't know. I got holes in my pants. I don't have nothing. I think a responsibility has to hit that person to wake up to find out, wait a minute, I need Jesus in my life. Definitely I need Jesus in my life. I need Jesus in my life. But I need him in my home. I need him in my family. I need him in everything I do. That person, when he comes to the house of God and yields to the presence of God, then now the word starts working. Little by little, little by little, the word is plowing things down. Wisdom is coming. Understanding is coming. Things that they never thought about, they're starting to happen. Paths, direction, uh, uh, divine appointments, money coming, things happening, miracles happening. But see, it's a process, ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't happen overnight, the manifestation. But what does happen overnight is the faith that will move that ship. Come on, church. The faith that will move that obstacle. Remember, a ship doesn't turn immediately over in time. It takes a while for that ship to turn. And it's the way our life is. Our life will turn for the better when the Word of God comes. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Now, let's look at something. Go with me to the book of Acts. Something happened to people in the Word of God. And it happens today. But it seems like today there's more attack upon people from wanting the Word of God. It's like when you were in school uh, learning about math, you played around, and then when test came, you flunked. And somehow you had to go back into the books and learn it all over again, or any any subject. Uh, In school, I played around a lot. In middle school, I played around a lot. I was in a rough school. The teachers were just afraid of the students. And I remember one time we had a, uh, Mr. Barlow, he was a nice history man, but he was, he was intimidated by the students that he would not teach. He'd let you just play, just sit there. And I remember saying, oh, man, how I messed up my history class. I needed to learn history. I needed to learn history, but I was so dumb, involved in messing around that I didn't learn anything. So now as, as, as I'm a little um, older, older in my age uh, sense, I want to learn history. I want to learn more. 
I want to learn more. Come on, say with me. I want to learn more. You know what I'm talking about? You learn more and you read more. And you say, I didn't know that. I didn't know, I didn't know about Oklahoma. I didn't know why it was called the Red Man's Land. I just thought it was a piece of land. But I've learned history here. This place has history, 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 history. Texas has history where we come from. Illinois has history. Oh, gosh. Abraham Lincoln. Oh, gosh. I wanted to learn so much. And I messed up when I was in school. But it didn't stop me from learning. This is what the Bible is telling us. Now notice this, people did, wanted to know. Now notice what it says in Acts, the second chapter. Are you there? This is the church in its prime. Jesus is now ascended to heaven. The church is being established, and the book of Acts is actually the establishment of the church. So if you want to read about the church, look at, read the book of Acts. You'll find everything that Jesus said for a church to be involved in. Acts, the second chapter. Now notice this. I want you to see verses... Uh, 47, and now notice this, now when I give you scripture, I'm highlighting some issues, so, but that, that's important for you to go home and study for your devotions. Can you say amen? Now notice this. Here, well, let's read verse 46. And continue daily in one mind in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. This is telling the people that were uh, at this time in this place of worship. Praising God and haver, having favor with all people. Let's go back. And continue daily in one mind, in, in unity, in the church, breaking bread from house to house. In other words, there was fellowship of the believers like never before. They ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. Having favor with all people. This is a sign of the responsibility of the word of God working on you, having favor. Favor, I think about it. Favor, only God can give you favor. Only God can cause favor to be on you. Where you tried and tried and tried, but once you got in the word, all of a sudden favor came on you. It's where all of a sudden raises started coming, money started coming through, breakthroughs started coming, debt cancellations started happening, uh, uh, new jobs, uh, things are happening, your life is, is peaceful. Come on, church, amen? Why? Because that tells us what was going on here. And the Lord added, now let's keep reading, and the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. The Lord added to the church daily those that be saved. Why? Definitely. Because the church was a place to hear the word of the Lord. Folks, listen, I will not excuse myself from a church service simply for something that is not of value to the kingdom of God. People may not understand that. Uh, well, I don't understand. Why can't you miss Sunday to be at our birthday party? Uh, I could be at your birthday party after church, but I'm not going to miss Sunday morning because that's the word of God. And today, people, now notice this, I, I know what I'm talking about. People today, for some reason, they think church is the last result of how I have time for it. But you have to some, understand something. Church is the first thing that we need in our life before any other thing. Now notice this, you may say, Pastor, you can't talk a little old-fashioned. No, 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 I'm trying to help us understand the people of the Word of God, they got into the Word of God. They got into worshiping. They got into praising. They got into the Word talk. In fact, look at verses 22 of that same chapter. Verses 22 says this. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Verses 22 says this. Uh, uh, here, verses 22. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth was a man attested to you by God with powerful works and wonderful signs which God did through him in your midst as you yourself know you have taken him. Let's stop here for a moment. What's he doing? He's preaching the word of God to them. This is the most beautiful story that you can read about Peter getting out into the patio, opened up the patio, started preaching to a people the word of God. And the Bible says the word pricked their heart. What does that mean? Touched them so much. There was a conviction so strong that they heard from God and they got saved and then they joined the house of the Lord and been, was taught the word, taught the word, or taught the word. Notice this. Notice this. 3,000 souls. Verses, verses 40. Uh, let's look at verses 40, uh, 47 now. Go down verse 47. The Bible says this. 
They were praising God, having favor, and the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Now notice this, how many people got saved? 3,000 people. 3,000 people. 3,000 people said, I'm tired of living this way. I need to take responsibility of my life, and I need to hear the breakthrough where it comes from, and it was through the Word of God. Amen. He didn't say, well, let me tell you a little story about what happened to me. No, he said, Jesus is the purpose why we need him. Jesus is the answer. Can you say amen? Look at Acts, the fourth chapter. Hallelujah. Amen. Again, we're looking at the word of God. Uh, the fourth chapter, verses one. Now notice what it says. As they spake, spoke to the people, the priest, captains of the temple, the Sadducees came upon them, being greatly troubled because they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. They were teaching them the word, and then these religious people got upset. And they seized them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. But many of those who heard the word of God, or the word believed, and the number of men grew to about 5,000. Now notice this, this is 5,000 men. Statistics says when a man takes his, when a man gives his life to Jesus and goes to church, family follows the man. That's the highest percentage. Uh, it's the highest percentage. Why? Because man, man, God gifted a man with an anointing to be the priest and the prophet of the home. And Satan knows how to destroy the priest and the prophet. That's why today men are families that are that are in disorder. It's because the man needs to get off his seat and get into the house of God. Can you say amen? I know what I'm talking about. I was a man that didn't want to go to church. I'd send her to church by herself. I'd stay home sleeping. And, and, and she would go to church. And I'll tell you what, I was miserable. And she was happy. I was miserable. And she was happy. I tried to make her life miserable. It didn't work. Till one day, I was going to, to, to work, and I noticed my hair was oily. I said, man, I just took a bath uh, last night, and my hair should not be oily. And I'm thinking, man, what is my head being oily? Found out she's putting oil on my pillow, praying for me. <laughs> Amen. And I found out she's putting oil on my work boots. Amen. I didn't know it was my work boots, but I tell you what, they might have been a little slippy. I don't know. Amen. <laughs> but 3,000 souls being born again because of the word. Say it with me, because of the word. The word has responsibility. See, these men heard the word and the word took responsibility. And they were given a responsibility of the word of God. Look at the, let's continue looking. Hallelujah. Are you with me, church? Hallelujah. Amen. Go with me to uh, verses 29 of that same chapter. Hallelujah. Amen. So, chapter 29. Notice what it says here. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, now notice what it says. Now, remember, I'm, I'm going right to points, and I need you to understand. So if you're interested in reading the scripture or the chapter, read it. Please read it. It's powerful. Amen. Now, Lord, look on their threats. These were, these were Christians being in trouble. The, the apostles were being in trouble. They were put in prison. Now look at their threats. And grant that your servants may speak your word with great boldness by stretching out your hand to heal that the signs and wonders may be performed in the name of your holy son Jesus. And when they had prayed, prayed what? This prayer. The place where they were assembled together was shaken. A whole lot of shaking going on. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with boldness. Now notice this, verse 432. And all the believers were of one heart, unity, and one soul, one mind. And no one said that what he was possessed of them, but to them all things were in common. Say with me, amen. All things were in common. Now notice this, here we're finding something, something so powerful. The word of God came simply by them praying a prayer. Now notice, I want you to understand the prayer here. This is what you can pray also. Notice this. Notice this, Father. Notice, look on their threats. You have problems in your life? God knows them before you ever know them. But you need to say, Father, the threats are upon my life right now. Grant me by your word that I may speak great boldness. That's authority, ladies and gentlemen. Don't let the devil walk away over your life, over your family, over your children, over, over anything. Don't give the devil a foot, uh, not even an inch. Don't give him anything. Come on, church. Immediately jump, <laughs> like my pastor said, jump on his chicken quick. Hallelujah. Amen. 
when they had prayed, the place was shaken. Devils don't like that when you pray the word. The place was shaken and they were assembled all together. They were filled with the Holy Ghost and spoke the word of God with boldness. That word boldness is authority. I like speaking the word of God with authority. Amen. With boldness in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. My granddaughter, I, uh, we were talking about uh, tornadoes and she says, Grandpa, I don't like tornadoes. I said, why, darling? She says, I, I, I'm scared of, oh, 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 well, let me, let me say something. You should not be scared of them because you have greater power than they do. And she looked at me. I said, let me tell you. Jesus said, speak to the storm and it shall dissipate. It shall be removed. Come on. And I said, next time you hear people talk about tornadoes, say, I command fear to go. And say, in the name of Jesus, I speak to this tornado. I destroy you in the name of Jesus now. I want you to say that now. In Jesus' name. She says, okay, Grandpa. And let me tell you, not too long ago, she came over her house. She said, Grandpa, I have power in what I say. I said, you got it, you got it, darling. You got it, darling. Amen. Come on. See, see what I'm saying? We're people of the word. We're people of the spirit. We're people of the Holy Ghost. Come on. We're people of faith. We have authority. We have power. We have responsibility. Come on, church. We're not gonna, we're not gonna put up with this. Amen. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. When I first moved to Oklahoma, people were saying, yeah, you're living uh, close to where all those tornadoes are. And in fact, there's a certain area that's called Tornado Alley. I said, where's this Tornado Alley? So they told me, one Saturday, Pastor Christine and I, we went out to, we went out to Norman and Moore, and we stood in a parking lot, and we said, we end your days now. No longer an alley here. No longer tornado alley here. You're going to move further away in Jesus' name. You're not coming through our city. You're not coming to Oklahoma City in any way. Come on, church. And then we met some people in Georgia. We we're pastors from Georgia, and uh, they were telling us, uh, you know, it's amazing how the wind the wind uh, uh, traffic or whatever they call it, the flow of the, tr of the wind flowed and now we're getting all year tornadoes that were coming to Oklahoma and now we're getting them up in Georgia and Alabama. And I told, sir, you got to do what I did. You got to pray them out. He said, where'd I send them? Send them to the ocean in Jesus' name. Keep sending them to the ocean. Amen. Amen. And was it, was it, what, did we say that in Jesus' name? Now notice this is why, because see, responsibility of the word working in us. We have responsibility. Maybe they, others don't know how to pray that way, but you know how to pray. You're taking responsibility. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Go with me to Acts 17 now. All this is done because of the word of God. The word, the word, the word is working. The word has responsibility, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, just don't, we don't come just to hear the word and say amen and it was a good sermon and then go home and live a life uh, full of the problems. We need to take what we learned here and activate it. Take that responsibility of the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. The 17th chapter. Are you with me, church? 17. Hallelujah. Amen. Now notice this, verses 4. The Bible says this. Uh, Acts 17, 4. It says, Some of them were persuaded and joined with Paul and Silas, including a great crowd of devout Greeks and many leading women. But the Jews, say with me, but the Jews, who did not believe became zealous and taken some evil men from the marketplace, gathered a, a crowd, stirred up the city and attacked the house of Jason, trying to bring them out of the mob. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some brothers to the city officials, crying out, these men have turned the world upside down. These men have turned the world upside down and then come here also. And Jason received them. Now notice this, look at what the enemy sees when you and I take responsibility of the word. They see that you're turning the world upside down. Really, it's the right side up for the believer. But what happens? Now notice what's taking place right now. Notice what's taking place in our politics, in our laws, in our government. Uh, now you know, you know that it's really crazy right things are really crazy that are happening out there i don't know what's well let's put it this way a lot is happening what do we do we have responsibility church to turn it upside down see the enemy knows how to turn it upside down but what he's saying he's saying the church be careful the church knows how to put it back to the right place 
Can you say amen? Come on, church, can you say amen? Uh, now notice this. The word produced people coming to Jesus here. People were coming. The Bible says multitude of men and women were being added to the church because of the word. Honorable Greeks, few, and there were many, not a few. The word produced something in them, and there was a jealousy. They started coming after the church, and it exposed the enemy. The enemy says, they've come to turn us upside down. No, they're actually coming to put you right upside right. Come on, church, can you say amen? It's like when you play poker, when you would play poker in the old days, and you would have a poker face, you know what I'm saying, a poker face, and you knew you were going to lead, you were going to lose, and you had no cards that were no good, but you had a poker face. I got you. In fact, I'm going to add some more. Oh, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> I'm going to add some more potato chips. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to add some more beans, pinto beans on the table. Amen. For those that play that way. And played that way. And then that person looks at you, and that person knows he's got a pretty good card, but man, I know that face of yours, and gives in. And you show them your cards. Oh, man, <laughs> poker face worked. Hallelujah, amen. And this is what happened here. The enemy showed his cards. Showed us, the believers, how to pray. Keep praying. You have responsibility. Keep pressing through. Like Jason. Jason was known, <laughs> Jason was known as a man of healer, but he noticed something that the church came to turn up the world upside down. Hallelujah. Really the upside right way. Come on, church. Can you say amen? We have responsibilities. Say with me, we have responsibilities. We have responsibilities. Hallelujah. Amen. Go with me to the Acts, the sixth chapter. There's so much here. Oh, I can feel the presence of God. The anointing just, just stirring me, stirring me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Now notice this. Responsibility. Now, now let, let's, let's kind of look at something here. To this point, we talked about responsibilities that we have as believers. You've been given much. Much is required of you. And I love to say before God, you, Oasis Center Church, have been given much. I, I thank God for the, the word that comes to us from his presence. I thank God for the fresh words that come to us. But what does that do? It just gives us more words to listen to. But it gives us more responsibility in our walk. Too much is given, much is required. Amen. You're, you're an ambassador of Jesus Christ here on this earth. Uh, further, you're kings and priests according to the word of God. Come on, you're royalty. You are a peculiar people, as the Holy Spirit said through Paul. You're very peculiar, very strange, very different. Why? Because the word of God in us. So don't get mixed up in, in, in the world's muck and stain your robes in that world of muck. Stand out. Rise up with the responsibility in the word of God and declare Jesus is Lord over our life. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. So, so now the church is growing. Can I say something, church, that's going to help you understand? You're growing in many ways right now you're growing in many ways right now don't let the enemy take what you're hearing right now and to push you back into where you were yesterday because yesterday is where you today is what you said yesterday but today you're going to say with the word and tomorrow you're going to get victory in greater ways can you say amen hallelujah church now this is that means responsibility came to all the believers so now all these believers are gathering to learn the word of god they're gathered to learn the word of God. But Satan has a way to stop the word. He can, get he can get people too busy. As your pastor, he can get me so busy, busy, busy that I don't have time to pray for you or the word or get the word in me. And I know when I get too busy. Yesterday at 3 o'clock, I told my honey, honey, I'm stopping. I'm going to take a shower because I had did so much in the morning. And I said, I'm taking a shower. I'm going to spend the rest of the night, evening, in the word of God. So I went to my office, and I told my wife, how long was up there? She said, you were up there the whole evening. It felt like just 20, 30 minutes in the presence of God. See, the enemy knew, knows how to take pastors and get them too busy to get the word to his people. But he also knows how to get you too busy so that you can come, to, you can come overwhelmed by the life of the things the world, of the, the world has to hinder your walk with God. 
Can you say amen? Now notice this. Let's look at something. Go with me to Acts, the sixth chapter. Now, uh, verses 1 of chapter Acts. Uh, it's chapter Acts. Uh, Acts. Acts 6. Hallelujah. Amen. When you have it, say hallelujah. hallelujah. In those days, as the disciples were multiplied, the church was growing. There was murmuring among the hellenists against the Hebrews. Division, strife, stress, strife, uh, uh, you know, because their widows were overlooked in the daily distribution. Now, that's a lie of the devil. Not in the house of God. This is strife in the house of God. This is racism now in the house of God. Let it be said, no racism, no strife in the house of God. Amen. So the 12 disciples called the multitude of disciples together and said, it is not reason for us to leave the word. Notice this. They can't leave the word because the word has responsibilities for us to leave the word of God and serve tables or to go deal with what you're dealing with. Brothers, look among yourself for seven men who are known to be full of the Holy Ghost, full of the Holy Spirit, of whom wisdom, of whom we will appoint over this duty. But we will give ourselves continue to pray and to the ministry of the word. Listen, ministry of the word. This is where Satan comes. He, he wants to take away your word time. He wants to take away your, your time of God's, the ministry of the word of God. That's where he comes to. And he comes to bring problems in your life. Maybe division, stress, uh, problems. I, I, I've been there. I've seen it. I can recognize when the enemy does that. I can recognize when the enemy is trying to bring this into my life to hinder me from the word as a pastor. But notice this, you as an individual... The enemy comes to take away the word. The Bible says in Luke, uh, when the word has been given to us, we have to be careful that the enemy doesn't come immediately to take away the word. Immediately take away the word. That means the moment you get up and say, God bless you, Pastor, we'll see you uh, Wednesday or Sunday, I I've got to pray that the word does not be taken off you. Yeah. Satan can't take the word off you. Say what I mean? Satan will not take the word of me. He can't. I won't permit him in Jesus' name. Amen. Now notice this. Notice this. If you keep reading, the Bible says, but we will give ourselves continued prayer. And what was said pleased the whole multitude. They were happy. And they chose Stephen, who was Stephen, who was full of faith, of the Holy Ghost and Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and all these people that I can't pronounce right now, <laughs> and the proselyte whom they presented before the apostles, and when they prayed, they placed their hands on them. Now notice what verse 7 now. So the word of God spread, and the number of disciples grew rapidly in Jerusalem, and a great number of priests were obedient to the faith. Priests, Sadducees, said, religious priests were obedient to the faith. Why? See, the enemy knew how he can stop a big gathering of people that know they're, they're enjoying the word. He brought in, uh, if I can say it, division in the church. He brought in strife in the church. He brought in racism. So to pull the apostles from their, their time with God in the word so that they can be busybodies and get away from the word. Now, what is this telling me, church? Listen to what I'm saying. What is this telling me? What is the, what is the, 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 the secret here that we're reading here? Word time. Don't let the devil take the word from you. I encourage you. Get in that word. Find devotional time. Don't study the word simply for devotion. Study the word for faith to increase in you. Amen. Come on, church. Uh, devotion is good, but sometimes we just read devotion like a, like a mechanic, like a, like, a, uh, like a robot. But we got to read it inspired of the Holy Ghost. Say, Holy Ghost, today as I open today's devotion, speak to my heart. I want to hear what the Holy Ghost is saying through this word. And let the Holy Ghost lead you in that word. Hallelujah. Amen. And when the doors open for your house, recognize the pastor has the word of God for us because he's not letting anything distract him. He's focused on hearing from the word and the Lord is going to speak to me through my pastor or my pastors and he's going to speak to me. So when I come to church, I'm hearing success. I'm hearing responsibility in the word of God. Don't let the devil take you from the house of God. Yes, amen. Now notice this. Uh, to us, been, it's been given much responsibility. This is what the Lord told me. More word coming from your life brings more responsibility to the people. But at the same time, the enemy doesn't want them to hear the word. Now, I understand that. 
I understand why people do not want to go to church, especially when they're a word church. They'd rather go to a church that has uh, <laughs> tight jeans, smoke machines, <laughs> amen, black lights where you can't see each other, you're bumping to each other, and popcorn displayed. Notice this, folks. If I want to go to, this, to, the, to the fair, I'll go to the fair. At least I get my money's worth. But when I go to church, I'm coming to hear from heaven what he has for me because there's a responsibility in my life as I go about as a believer. As an American, I have responsibility. Oh, April 15th, we had a big responsibility, right, all of us? April 15th, did y'all not do your taxes? April 15th, the deadline, oh. Oh, taxes. <laughs> oh, ta hey, you better get an extension, brother. <laughs> Amen. Tax time. I said, honey, how much money are we getting? No, we're paying. I said, oh, Lord, glory. Well, that's my job. That's my job. I'm an American. I pay my taxes. Now, I'm going to pray that that money is not being used and abused. Come on. I want to know. I want to know all this money that we're paying all these countries. I want to know. I want to know where my money is going. And it's going through my voting time. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Don't get me on there, Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm not a politician, but it's important for us to recognize duties and responsibilities as Americans. Jury duty. Oh, it's my responsibility. Although I, I want to get paid. How much do they pay? $2 a day? I don't know. $15 a day, and, and you got to pay your own meal and your own parking, and, and you sit there. And I, was, I was chosen for a jury. I went all the way to, the, to a week. Finally, the, <laughs> they realized he's a pastor. Get him out. <laughs> <laughs> they knew I was going to act according to the word of God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Go with me to 2 Timothy, the second chapter. We're going to close. 2 Timothy, the second chapter. Hallelujah. Amen. So the word has responsibility. Use the responsibility of the word of God. Now you have a great responsibility. Can you say amen? I have responsibility to the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church. We're, we're responsible people of the word. Can you say amen? amen. Now, y'all give me some time here. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Where are we going? First Timothy? Oh, second Timothy. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Second Timothy, the second chapter. Look what it says in verse 20. Now, uh, we got to see this. I want you to see this. Second Timothy. Oh, I'm in the third chapter. Yeah. Second chapter. Hallelujah. Now notice this. In a large house, there are not only gold and silver vessels, but also those of wood, clay, and some are for honor and some for dishonor. Now this, let me keep reading here. One who cleanses himself from these things will be a vessel of honor, sanctified fit for the master's use and prepared for every good work. Let's stop here for a moment. In a large house. What's he saying? He's saying, where there is responsibility, there's going to be people. In a large house, like this, this, this room right here, this, this, this scripture, in a large house, there's not only gold, silver, vessels, but also those of wood and clay. What does that mean? Different types of people that have responsibilities in the house. Different types of people. You might have got saved yesterday. Amen. You're learning the word of God. But there's people that have been in the house of God years and they have the word and they're strong in faith. They're responsible. They're different vessels. But now notice this. In that house, all these vessels have a job to do. Let's look at it again. He says this. There's vessels, but also wood, clay, some are for honor, some are for dinosaur. One who cleanses himself from these things will be a vessel of honor, sanctified fit for the master's use. Every vessel this house has in different forms, in different, different material, is going to be used of God. But notice this, the wood vessel one day will become the gold vessel. One day, the dishonorable vessel will become a vessel of honor. 
Now, what does that mean, Pastor, in a house? Meaning, all of us are on different paths. We're on, we're on a path to the kingdom of God, but as we go and learn what you're hearing, that's what you're becoming. Now, notice this. I've been in churches where people have been in church for 30, 40 years, and they don't know how to pray in the Holy Ghost. I've been in churches that people know the word, and they'll say, I, I, Pastor, could you pray? I, I have... Uh, I have my arthritis is bothering me. That's not a believer. A believer says, Pastor, would you pray and agree with me that we break the stronghold of arthritis? I'm not owning it. Like the commercials, I have this and I have this and I have this. We're not owning it, but we're taking responsibility over these things. Come on, church, amen. I remember there was a couple that came to the altar to pray and asked me to pray for them, and I prayed for them. And uh, she said, I I'd like for you, Pastor, to pray for us. Uh, we're having problems. And she looked at her husband and says, uh, do you tell him? I says, what problems? <laughs> he, he didn't want to own up to the problem. She said, well, you know why we're here. Uh, why we're here. They started fighting the altar. One knew, the other one didn't take responsibility. So what did I pray? I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, put this couple in unity, in oneness of hope in the name of Jesus. Break the stronghold off them. Amen, in Jesus' name. Well, they got involved in church. Got involved in church. And God started moving them up, 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 up in the church. I saw their growth, their growth. And guess what? They became helpers in ministry. Helping couples. I thought, dear Lord, what you could do. Helping couples. Well, yeah, they knew why they needed God in their life. They'd been around. They'd been through problems as couples. What happened here? They were couples maybe dishonorable to whatever the problem was. Made of clay, wood. And then God started moving them up. Why? The word. Say me the word. The word, hallelujah, amen, the word. So in other words, let's, let's, let's take that responsibility that God has given us. Go ahead and stand up, everybody. Let's take this responsibility that God has given us. Hallelujah, amen. Which is the word of God. Oh, precious word, powerful word, awesome power that is demonstrated by the word of God. The word of God will not return void, but must accomplish what it's set forth to do. It's powerful, hallelujah, amen. Like the scientist that froze the water and spoke good things, and the water became so beautiful, the ice versus the negative, right? Let's become people that take responsibility over our lives. As I said earlier, you're responsible for your actions. You're responsible for your own conduct. You're responsible for your actions, your consequences. You're accountable for the choices you make. I want every eye closed. Every head bowed. Before we go any further, Father, in the name of Jesus, if you've never made the Lord of your life, made Jesus the Lord of your life, just accept him right now. Those that are watching live, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, you could receive him right now. It's the greatest miracle that can change your life. All together say, Dear Jesus, come into my heart. I believe you're the Son of God. You died for me. And on that third day, you resurrected. Jesus, I believe come into my heart. I receive you now, and I'll never, never be the same again. Praise God. You came to the family of God now. You're, you're in the house. You're in the house. Now, right now, in Jesus' name, I pray for everyone here, Father, and everyone that's listening, Lord. We stop the activities of the enemy. We break the strongholds of yesterday over people's lives. We break the bondages of wickedness that hold people from moving forward with the presence of God. Right now, loosen them for the kingdom of God. Loosen them right now in Jesus' name. Now, Father, your people now. Father, the word comes and comes into their lives and causes breakthrough. This very moment, Lord, breakthrough in their life. Crumbling right now, the walls are crumbling 
of old, the walls that hinder them are breaking right now. The chains, the rusted chains, the chains that have been holding them for years are snapping. The cables are being severed in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, darkness is leaving them. The old way of living is gone in Jesus' name. They're becoming new, a, a brand new people in you, Father. Right this merry moment because of the word, the word of Jesus taken responsibility responsibility in them right now in Jesus name right now in the name of Jesus and father we thank you for change in their lives change in their homes change in everything that they do Lord everything they do father you're taking them like the coal that was once in the mine the coal mine turn it into a diamond Jesus Oh, like a gold rock, a nugget that was in the cave in, in a, a quarry, Lord, is being uh, uh, burnt and being uh, right now, Lord, the dross and all the dirtiness is coming off right now. The purity is rising up in them, Jesus. Wholeness of the power of God is rising in them right now. Say with me, yes, Lord, me. It's in me. It's me, Lord. I'm, I'm being cleansed. Say it right now. It's me, Lord. I'm being cleansed right now. I'm being made new. Say it. It's me. It's me, Lord. It's me. I'm being made whole again. It's me, Lord. I I'm taking responsibility of your word in my life. I'm hearing your word. Hallelujah. Say with me, I'm hearing your word and I'm adding your word to my life right now in Jesus' name. Father, we'll never be the same again. In the name of Jesus, we'll never be the same again. Lord, from this moment on, according to your word, they will never be the same again in the name of Jesus. I speak breakthrough in their life. I speak prosperity, wholeness. Oh, shamro sakataraba. I speak it, Lord. We declare it, Father. I make a decree and a declaration. Your people today, Lord, heard the word. And today, they are changed by the word. The anointing has changed them right now by the word of God. And Lord, they're equipped, Father, to do great things in Jesus' name responsibilities lord jesus coming in greater way to them lord oh father with the measure they hear more will be given to them oh father to whom much is given much is required lord jesus and father it's all good it's all precious it's all promising in the name of jesus Oh, hallelujah. Can you pray? Can you pray in the Holy Ghost? If you're filled with the Holy Ghost, pray in tongues. Maybe you never, you haven't spoken tongues in a while. Go ahead and release that tongue. If you've never been filled speaking in tongues, ask the Lord, Lord, fill me right now. Loose my tongue, loose my tongue, loose my tongue. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. Lidi bi kondorobo landara ba brinde lotorobo nda brande kite lorororo sandara ba brinde kite londorombo nda branda ha oh ha the prayer the prayer the righteous the perfect prayer reach in heaven right now rota brande kite oh the prayer uh, of of devotion the prayer of dedication the prayer of responsibility the prayer of breakthrough shom brande landiri bi kotorobo kota raba oh sandara ba kata. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. We'll never be the same, Father. We'll never be the same. Your people will never be the same. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now notice this. There's been a shine on you right now. Your garment is, is pure right now. Right now, right now, right now. White, 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 white. Pure. Don't get it stained. Don't get it dirty. Don't let it fall in the miry pit. Don't let the enemy take you and put you into the, the mud hole. You stay on top of the, you stay away from that mud hole. Stay away from dirtiness. Stay away from all that stuff. Stay close to God. Stay close to his word. Pray in the spirit. Worship him. Love on him. Get your devotion. Get your Bible. Get, get a devotion. Get in that word in the morning. Just talk to him. Just love on him. Just talk to him. Say, God, I love you. I'm not asking for anything. I just love you. I love you. I love you. You're a good guy. Just spend time with him. That's all. And then get in that word. When the church opens the door, you, you, you just get, be the first ones in the house of God to get the word. Show that you're proving how hungry you are to the word. Oh, hallelujah. Ribo, ala, isi, andi, oso, rota, sika. Oh, hallelujah. Sota, 
Oh, there's an anointing right now. There's an anointing that is increasing in you right now. In the name of Jesus, right now. Right now. Lift, lift your hands. Oh, brikata ha. Oh, shokota ba. In the name of Jesus, all your people here today, your word, your word will produce. Your word will produce. Your word. Your word says, the word says that when the word goes out, it will accomplish what it's set forth to do. And it will not return void and null and, vo- uh, and fall to the ground. It will accomplish in the name of Jesus. Father, there's prosperity in the word of God. Giants, giants coming. Giants in this house of the word growing to be more like Jesus. Hallelujah. Hearts being filled with the presence of God. Oh, lies being changed. Healing in their body. Manifested in their body. Healing. Healings in their bodies. Healing in their bodies. Healings in their bodies right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, uh, organs being healed. Heart being healed. Oh, vessels and bone structures, nerves being and heal bones, oh Branda, Yisha, Brotaba, breakthrough, illumination of the power of God shining in our way right now. Oh, Shatarabakata, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, hallelujah. Mm. Now, we take authority over the enemy, we take authority over Satan and his demons, we take authority over you, darkness. You will not hinder the people of God in Jesus' name. Stand back. For whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Say, I'm free right now. I'm free right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, let the word work. Let the word work. Let the word take its responsibility. Hallelujah. You take that responsibility as well. Ah. Oh, Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. Oh, ah. <laughs> Oh, Rabbi, right now the Spirit of God is just moving all across this building, all across, touching every one of you. Oh, hallelujah, every one of you. Every one of you. Every one of you. Oh, Rabbi, God. Don't try to figure it out. <laughs> just, just welcome the presence of God. Just welcome it into your life. And try to figure it out. Just say, I welcome you, Holy Spirit. I welcome you, Holy Spirit. I welcome you. Ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Oh, Sotarabandi Kiri Babrunda Bra. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. He's here, Holy Spirit. Ah, thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. We sense your presence. We sense your glory. <laughs> we sense you here among us. Oh, we love you, Father. I love you, Father. Oh, I love you, Father. I love you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. You're so good to us, so good to us, so good to us, so good to us. So good to us, so good to us, so good to us. Hallelujah, amen. He's good to you, ladies and gentlemen, he's good to you. He's good to you, he's a good God. He's not a, he's not a hard father, he's not a, a mean daddy. He loves us so much. Oh, he loves us. He loves us. You've got, you've got, you're, you got free today. You got free today. Chains have been broken. Bondages have been broken. They've been broken. You've been set free today. You've been set free today. Now with that freedom, take that responsibility to enter into more. Of his presence, take that responsibility. Turn to more. Amen. Oh, Jesus. I tell you what, if you have to just, uh, when you get home, just, just pray over your home, over your household. Oh, hallelujah. Pray over your children. I know your children are experiencing the move of God downstairs. Pray over your children, my, your grandchildren. 
speak blessings over them. Opportunities that we have with our grandchildren, our, our, our children are so precious. Are so precious to impart to them the anointing of God. So they may grow and not know the devices of the enemy. Not know the, the enemy's um, attacks. Not get involved in the world that we live today. Set apart. Children set apart. Not knowing the ravages of sin. Not knowing the ravages. Is it possible, Pastor? Yes, it is. Pray for your children. Pray for your grandchildren. Pray for your family. That they will not know the ravages of sin. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Jesus, I love you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you.